All right, so you're on the fence about the On3 Turbo Kit. Maybe you have one, maybe you're thinking about getting one, you haven't installed it yet, or you got some questions about install. This is going to be a full video on how to properly install your On3 Turbo Kit. All right, what's up my people and welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. Now today we're going to run down a full on three turbo kit installation. Now I'm going to kind of um, break this up in little segments. I'm not going to show you turning me turning every single bolt or connecting every single clamp, but this is going to be a highlight of things you want to do to um, install your on three turbo kit. Now this kit is for a push rod motor, 94.95. The um, Fox bike kits are a little bit different as far as um, header placements, but same principle. Same principle for a mod motor. If you have a mod motor, like I say, the, the header placements are gonna be different, but the technique you can pretty much um, use for mod motor, push rod motor, uh, Fox body, New Edge, any kind of turbo kit from On3. Just kind of follow these steps. And we're gonna to try to get you a leak-free system. Right off the bat, if you have an On3 turbo kit, take it to a machine shop and get it shaved. You know, you can get a straight edge and check and see if it's true or not, but most likely from the consensus <laughs> that's out there, these headers are going to be warped. So take it to a machine shop, get them shaved. Next thing you do is take a Dremel, take an angle grinder, and these notches right here. You know, this is um, basically a cutoff wheel, a three inch cutoff wheel that I use. And I just made these slices into the link bar. Now what this is gonna do, these, it's gonna allow a little flex on these ports. The problem I've always had with this header is it leaks from the end, either the you know the one and the four or the five and the um, the eight. So doing this is going to give this um, header a little flex, just just enough to keep the, that seal tight. Next thing that you want is a rim flex gasket. Now, the nice thing about these rim flex gaskets are they're thick, but they crush to 50% of their sides to, to make up the gap of any kind of um, warpage that you could potentially have in these headers. The other thing, now I know everybody talk about like the um, stage eight. The problem with the stage eight is you cannot get the full, uh, um, it's, it's like a, a two piece or a three piece um, part and the bolt holes going to the port, they're too close. So you have this and then there's like another piece that's supposed to um, fit up against here. The problem is there's like a half moon piece that you put the bolt through and there's not enough room in between the bolt hole and the header port so at least in my case the set of headers that i received i wasn't able to get a stage eight um bolt kit on there but um these proform locking bolts uh they work pretty good so this is a, a cheaper alternative and there's enough clearance for it to fit into the bolt holes now you can modify some of these bolt holes you can get a dremel and open these up a little bit. You see, I had to do that on that one right there. But definitely Proform, I mean the Rimflex gasket and the Proform locking bolts. Now, some people um, can get away just using Ultra Copper on these gaskets. I've tried like a thousand different combinations and um, just personally, I like the way the um, the Rimflex gasket, it gave me the best seal. 
outside of using just straight out your copper. But, you know, I think the, the warpage was just so bad. You know, I, I don't think ultra copper was, there wasn't enough ultra coppers to cover up the gap on the warpage on the, the end of this um, header in my case. So, you know, people have run ultra copper successfully. It's up to you whether you want to use it or not. But I just say, go ahead and use the, um, the Renflex. All right, so next thing you want to do when you get your on 3 Turbo Kit is take the gate and chuck it. I remember when I first got the kit, um, I was only able to get five PSI and I had a one bar spring. They're, um, at least they're older systems. I've had this kit for almost five years now and pretty much consensus is like the gates are just horrible on those on three kits. So um, it might last for a little while, but it will fail very quick. So I upgraded to a precision. Uh, I believe this is a 38 millimeters, same size as the one that comes in the kit. And it's, um, it's just a direct bolt on, so no modifications needed. So replace the gate, the blow off valve, um, no issues with it. Now this isn't the stock on three blow off valve. This is a like a cheap Amazon replacement, but there's really no difference between the two. Now let's talk about protecting your headers. Now, some people like to use wrap. I prefer the um, header armor. So this is um, Heat Shield Products. This is a heat shield armor. I, I call it header armor. And it basically comes in a roll like this. And you form it around your header. And now, there's plenty of other tutorials out there on how to uh, mold this to your header. I kind of just freestyle it and it works out pretty good. The other thing too, like I don't daily drive my um, turbo car, but you know, um, if you have the header wrap on and you do drive your car in the rain, you're basically, um, in theory, you're, you're keeping more moisture in the header wrap as opposed to this. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. I just think the head armor looks better <laughs> than just a wrap because, you know, you, you can kind of see the discoloring on um, this wrap I have right here. You know, this isn't going to um, vary in color much. You know, if you, if you get it dirty, then yeah, it's gonna um, show the dirt. But, you know, if you have a, a clean engine bay, you don't have any oil leaks or anything like that, then it's pretty much gonna look like this for the, mo the majority of his life. So highly recommend this. Um, it's kind of on the expensive side, but I think it's worth it. And you get a better um, heat barrier also. Like um, when I was running just straight um, header wrap, um, I, don't know, I don't have the exact you know, temperature difference between the two, but you know, just the radiant heat from under the engine was a lot cooler with the header armor. So I don't wrap the headers with um, heat wrap, but I do wrap the other um, hot parts. So um, the downpipe, the crossover, the little um, connector, this connects the turbo to the downpipe. I, I will use header wrap on that. Other parts of the kit is pretty straightforward as far as um, sealing or leakage or anything like that. They're hose clamps, they're silicone clamps, they're, they're never had a problem with them. I've just had this kit for so long and had a couple of different turbos. I've used different brands of silicone <clears throat> couplers. Um, they're T-bolt clamps. Um, I really didn't have an issue with. V-band clamps, just get rid of them. I, I'm a big fan of the vibrant clamps just because they have this um, quick latch six system. It's a better example. So that hooks into here. So it's a quick latch system. As I say, you need um, maybe four three inch V bands and one, two, 
Um, yeah, I think only two, two and a half inch V bands, but whatever comes in your kit, just replace it with some quality, um, vibrant. Evil Energy is another brand that's out. There's like a, um, vibrant knockoff that's, uh, pretty good. So let's get to installing the, um, driver's side first. <laughs> 